what's going on y'all so we back again for another episode review of the real <laughs> okay no we back for real housewives of potomac season um seven episode five uh the burn section session section section okay girl i swear anyway um we gonna get up into the episode so the episode starts off we get ashley going over there to candy's house now this is the first time that ashley has been over there to candy's new place because you know they just never been on the same page ever since um you know, Candace came into the picture, which was crazy. Like Candace put out there because Ashley is the one that, you know, brought her into the group. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we always, I don't know. I really thought that they was going to be best of friends because they were the young girls of the group. You know, they did have a lot of similarities. They was in the pageant world and, you know, things of that such. They both had white husbands and stuff. You know, I thought they was going to get along. You know what I'm saying? But hell, that just didn't really happen the way that we wanted to happen. And I don't know if it's going to still happen because at this moment, you know, so far it's okay. Um, you know, they're talking about the whole situation with, um, you know, Candace and Giselle. And, you know, I just don't understand why Ashley will sit there and say, um, Chris hasn't, you know, said anything to her like, you know, apologize for the misconception or misunderstanding or, you know, for making her feel uncomfortable and all this shit. Because, you know, Candace had to put out there and say, bitch, the reason why I'm stressing, the reason why I had to stop doing her IVF treatment or whatever it was, you know, her egg retrieval treatment was because bitches in the group was just stressing her out. And that's understandable. But... I just don't get how some people just get on this Giselle train and want to automatically be on her side about things, Ashley, you know, and say, how come, you know, Chris just can't go out and just, uh, you know, reach out to her and apologize for what, for what he did absolutely nothing wrong. If you felt uncomfortable about this married man or the perception of a married man being in your hotel room why would you allow him to come into your hotel room in the first place why didn't you just say you know um how about we just talk downstairs in the lobby how about we talk in this open area right here i mean even though there's nobody there let's just talk it up or whatever we don't need that big of a room we don't need that big of a space where all eyes can be on you if that's what it was you know because according to giselle chris really didn't do anything he just made her uncomfortable because he was a married man up in the room with her. That's it. That's literally what it was. You know what I'm saying? He didn't touch her. He didn't say nothing or whatever. And you expect him to come out after you keep on putting this out here and it got around the group trying to make it something that is not. And you want him to come and apologize to her. Bitch, fuck that. She don't deserve it. Okay. I'm sorry. She just don't because it's Giselle. And I really hate this fucking storyline that she is going with because it's making shit like this make it hard for real people, real victims who have been, you know, in these fucked up situations and something has happened for people to believe them. She don't understand what this is doing to the bigger picture of things when it's when it's a situation like this. OK, um, meanwhile, you know. They talked about the whole situation with Ashley and Michael and how that's going. And, you know, he hasn't spoken to her. Uh, he needed some time. Girl, he got his vasectomy and he said, bitch, I need some time. I'll call you later. I'm like, Michael, get the fuck up out your feelings, okay? Because you talking about how I don't know if he feel like this shit going to affect his business. If anything, baby, your behavior on this show should have been affected your business each and every episode that you've been on. OK, not just you getting a divorce, but how about the sexual assault allegations and all this other shit that happened while you was on this show that you kept on coming back season after season. And now you don't want to come back because it's getting a little bit too much for you. Your truth coming out there, sir. I just I just don't get it. But, you know, they talk about the separation and all of that situation girl she said yeah we can be separated we ain't got to be living in different houses we just can't sleep in the same bed we can't have sex with each other and all that shit so who is it a camera up in there that's monitoring whether or not they up there going into each other bedrooms or you know fucking off on each other because what's the point they could still be doing all of that shit and still say that they were separated i 
don't, I don't know, girl. I don't know. Because ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell. Michael had to go get, well, shit, it's Michael's place. Ashley, I don't know. But then Ashley got the baby, so I keep up in there. Michael should have just went and got him a little, um, which he probably already do, a little condo on the sky that's probably on the opposite end of everything that's going on, you know, uh, of the building or wherever they at. So, um, you know, you got that going on. And, you know, part of the reason why Ashley feels some of the way that she feels about Giselle, because Giselle, she know everybody's shit. And, you know, Candace started talking about how, like, yeah, girl, let me tell you something. I heard about you being up in a uh, little hotel room, not hotel, but at the little bar or whatever, with a little hockey player. She was like, bitch. You know, the way Ashley fell out and the way that they was conversing with each other, I said this would have been so cute. And that dynamic would have worked so fucking well if them two would have stayed on this. This is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I love that scene, you know, them interacting with each other like that. But, bitch, we know shit ain't gonna last. But, um, you know, you got that. And she was just like, I was out with my girls. And we ran up into this dude. And, you know, we just talked. We had dinner. And it was like, every man that I get with, I'm gonna have to compare him to Michael. Because Michael can, you know, make conversation about anything like aliens. Like, girl, if you can't make me laugh or can't talk about aliens, I mean, what can you do? I said talk about other shit that matters. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Girl, I want to talk about E.T., bitch. Okay? We already know what happened to E.T. E.T. phoned home. All right? That's what happened. Okay? You know? Um. Meanwhile, they get into talking about that and talking about how, uh, yeah, people, it, the, the Potomac is small. It's small and people know their secrets and everything. And it was one point, like, Cameron really thought that she was getting away with doing some of the stuff that she was doing. You know, she thinking that she can go sneak off and have a restaurant across town with somebody else that wasn't right. I said, bitch, no, we're not going to put our tea out there. I said, so wait a minute, Karen and, um, or I should say, Candy, she still got an issue with Karen. I noticed that they haven't really re um, interacted so far. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I she went to her party. That's cool or whatever. That was a cast event. But are they really not still cool? Is Candace really still up in her feelings about that whole Monique situation or whatever and how it went down last season too? Is that still a thing? I don't know. I don't keep up like that. So y'all tell me. Um, but then, you know, they was just kicking. I, 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 I like that little first scene banter. Because then we get into um, Mia and Gordon. And baby, you know, she was out there with the uh, kids and they having a little din, din or whatever. And it was cute, you know. It looked like Pop Pop and um, Mama, you know, with the kids. Pop Pop and Nanny with the kids. That's literally what it looked like. I'm not going to kid you not, okay, baby? That's the dynamic that they give me. It give me that, you know, Mia is the high class nanny with Pop Pop. Okay, <laughs> taking care of Pop Pop grandkids, but um, you know, just asking him how he doing and you know how the business shit is doing, and she was basically saying, "Listen, girl," or I say, "Listen, baby, I don't want to open up no more um, no more offices." Okay, we don't need no more practices right now. I am tired. I got to deal with these kids. I got to deal with work as it is. Plus, I got to deal with my health, and that's what his main concern was. You know, they still at this moment don't know what's going on with Mia. And you well, I'm not even going to hold that against me because the body and the medical stuff can be a crazy thing. There are people out here that have been having symptoms for a lot of stuff and they, the doctors and, and hospitals and stuff, they just don't know what it is. So all I'm just telling me is quit talking about that. Go ahead and get them lumps removed and let that be that. Okay. For the girl start questioning you because you know, you are a liar, but I ain't saying that you lying about this. You a liar. <laughs> we got to admit that. But you ain't lying about this. I don't feel like she lying about this. You know, um, I feel like sometimes people probably feel like Mia probably lie about shit because she just has a casual way of saying shit. Like it's matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? And so that's just what it is. But I really don't feel like she's lied about the health care. But, um, you know, they she want to get the girls together and, you know, take them down to Miami and, um, you know, she was talking about how, you know, her and Jacqueline went to Miami a few years ago, whatever. And I think that's around the time when she met Gordon. She said, listen, Gordon was happily married. And I feel like she was being sarcastic because she said, bitch, I, I don't, I hope she was being sarcastic because, bro, that make it sound like he was a home wreck. He was happily married and we was down there. We was down there in Miami and we was fucking all over the beach, okay? We was doing everything. She said the only thing that I did not do was pussy pop on the headstand. I said, you know what, Mia? 
you do give me video girl tease. You do give me, you know, if it, it, it's like different level of video girls, you know, the video girls that really get up there and pop their ass and do all that nasty shit or whatever that I like. But then you give me the classy video girl tease that I'm going to show my ass and I'm going to swing it just a little bit. But I'm going um, to dance in place and I'm going to just dance like this. That's it. You know, I ain't going to give you too much. I'm going to give you just enough to make, a, make it look pretty. You know what I'm saying? That's what Mia gives me a little bit. And then she said, Miami, let me tell y'all something, girl. Speaking of video girls, we ain't got none these days, okay? Because back in the day, we used to be able to name the video fixings. And they used to be just as motherfucking popular as the artists, okay? Y'all already know I was in love with me some Melissa Ford. <sighs> it was so many times. Oop, it was so many signs. The door stopper. It was so many signs back then that I, um people didn't catch on that I was gay as fuck. But bitch, I said, all right, Mia, go down there. Y'all had some fun. You know, <laughs> Gordon said, we're going to have some fun. We had some fun down there. I said, oh, I bet you you did, sir. <laughs> so then we get to see Giselle, girl. Um, we get to see Giselle and her girls, all three of them this time. They're going to get some minis and some petties, okay? Um, the girls, they're getting pedicures, or I should say manicures, and, you know, Giselle getting a pedicure. And, um, you know, Giselle waited until they got up into the goddamn, you know, uh, nail place for her to be talking over everybody across the room to the girls about their sweet 16 and everything. You know, um... Listen, listen, the only thing that the only time, the only reason why I, I put up with Giselle scenes with her kids is because her daughters be getting her the fuck together. That is it. But other than that, what individual scenes do Giselle offer us? Not much. Not much. And if you go back and you look at it, Giselle don't never really have a real storyline, okay? Mama be scoping through, you know, talking about everybody else shit. That's what she do. And to be honest... She, I feel like she kind of playing it right. You know, as much as I can't stand her sometimes, and especially what she's doing this season with this Chris situation, not necessarily putting your business all the way out there. You know, she she playing that shit right a little bit. She gives me Dr. Heavily a little bit. Because, girl, you don't know much about her fucking relationship, but um, she be all up in everybody else's business, okay? And, um, you know, G Giselle said, bitch, I learned from when Jamal was on there two seasons ago not to do that shit no more. When Sherman was on there not to do that shit no more, okay? Because that shit bit me in my ass. I said, yeah. You know, she talking about the kids Sweet 16 and how Jamal is always going to be there at any event that she they have or whatever. Um, hopefully that, you know, when Ashley get divorced from Michael, he is the same way. Um, you know what? One can hope. I, I really hope that uh, Michael don't fuck over Ashley just because she want this divorce. If they get this divorce um, and then take it out on the kids or whatever. Because, you know, some niggas is just... Some people are crazy like that and some people are bitter like that because, you know, they fucked up a good thing or whatever type of situation they had. Meanwhile... You know, and speaking of kids, y'all, listen, listen. So, I was just thinking. I was doing a whole bunch of thinking at work today because I ain't had shit else to do. So, I was like, you know what? I feel like, you know, because I was going, I feel like, first of all, I'm in my bougie era. You know what I'm saying? Y'all may not feel like it's a little bougie, but, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm about to be that girl that just, you know, be shopping at Trader Joe's and Whole Foods or whatever, you know, doing a little online shit or whatever, you know, doing a little fancy shit. Somebody gonna say, bitch, that ain't fancy. It is for me. It is for me, okay, because I don't normally visit these stores, these stores like that, you know, and I went to some stores today, you know what I'm saying, and I was downtown with, you know, all the folks or whatever, and I just felt like real, real grown, you know what I'm saying, like I've always been grown, but for some reason today, I just felt real grown today, yeah, and I feel like, girl, I feel like... I want to, I'm entering, I want to be somebody auntie stage. Like, I want kids, but I want to be the auntie that the kids come over to the crib and um, kick it with. Like, the baby, like, I need to find some friends that, um, about to get pregnant 
so that I can watch their babies or whatever and be like, oh, look at my little Nisi Boo, whatever. Because my one friend who just had a baby like three years ago, four years ago or whatever, you know, they, she don't live in the state. She don't live in the state. I need somebody right here or whatever, you know, just, no, come on, can we come over and see this? I, I feel like I'm in that stage right now. I don't know. I don't know. I have maternal instincts, but not for my kids, but for other people's kids. There it is. But um, anyway, moving on from that, that was a cute little thing. I ain't even gonna lie. That was cute. It was cute because of the kid. Meanwhile, you got um, Robin going to meet up with this uh, lawyer, Miss Marla, talking about a prenup. A prenup for what? A marriage that's never going to fucking happen. Okay, I, this common law, girl, y'all common law married at this point. <laughs> okay, mama want to know, um... Can she go ahead and do the monetary clause? You know, she said, listen, she is the breadwinner. She got a little bit more money than one and she got businesses. She made sure to put that is, that businesses on the end of business. You know what I'm saying? That pluralness, you know what I'm saying? At the end of businesses, you know, to say that, listen, bitch, if something goes wrong between me and Juan right about now and um, we got to get a divorce, whatever is mine, I want it to stay mine, okay? I don't want him to have no parts of my business and all that shit. I said, that's cool. That's cool. You know, and she keeps on bringing up this whole point about, you know, they had a prenup before, but at the time it was like, what was the point? Because they ain't had nothing. They ain't had shit because you helped get the money stole. But hey, you know, people don't think that they're going to be broke by the end of the time they get out of marriage or whatever, you know? So it, it had, it served its purpose for what it needed to, uh, or what it would have. It was good that you did have it in place either way. Um, so I'm not necessarily mad that she wants a prenup, especially when it comes to the business aspect. And then when they asked about the infidelity clause, she was like, I mean, that's what broke up our relationship, our marriage in the first place. I said, so it wasn't the money. It was because he cheated. You mean to tell me it wasn't because y'all went broke. It's just a joke. I said, oh, okay. If that's what you want us to believe, that's what you want us to believe. Because, um... Truth be told, I feel like, I'm not going to put that out there. But truth be told, I feel like Juan ain't been just fucking around with Robin. That's just how I feel. I just I just feel like that. And I feel like Robin could possibly, at one particular point, been doing the same thing when they was together. Not when they was living together, but they wasn't together. Bitch, Ashley and Robin's situation damn near the same. If y'all think about it, they're damn near the same. But anyway, I'm just sitting here like, and she be judging her shit too. I'm like, girl, y'all damn in the same boat. She was like, you know, why I'm probably not going to be happy about that. I said, girl, Robin, give it up. Give it up because we're tired. We're tired. We just don't care no more about this relationship. I'm sorry. So then we get Karen. She outside on what I thought was a farm, but it's like a little flower thing or whatever. They went to tulip picking. And um, now, girl, Miss Mamas, I know when you came out and said, or when you looked at your app, you saw that it was supposed to be a little cool out there. So, um, it's just like if you're going to go uh, pumpkin picking or whatever, you're going on a pumpkin farm, pumpkin patch, you got to dress accordingly, okay? We ain't trying to be cute. We ain't trying to be extra cute. I mean, I know you on the camera or whatever, so you don't want to be all fucked up or whatever. But, you know, put on a coat, okay? Put on a jacket, like a thick jacket or whatever. You're about to be outside for a minute. It is cold. It is brisk. Okay, baby, it is the beginning of spring at the end of freaking winter. Okay, so, you know, put on something. And then Ashley come the same way. I said, girl, you asking Miss Lady who just there. She like looking at y'all like, look at these motherfuckers. Asking all these questions or whatever. Keep, do you got a blanket? Ain't nobody else asking for no blanket. And then Wendy came. Now, I said, now, Wendy, I know your ass cold as hell. Okay, now see, I can do some cold, but baby, I still would have had to have a jacket jacket. I would have said, let me turn around, let me turn around, girlfriend, this ain't going to happen. But they went to go do some little tulip picking or whatever. The lady was showing them how to do it. You got to go all the way down to the bottom so that you can get the bulb, okay? Because Karen said, listen, I just spent $3,000. I said, $3,000 on some flowers? She said, hell yeah, I had them plant them and them bitches dead. I said, oh, that's kind of fucked up. Okay, she said, let me do my shit myself. So they trying to sit, uh, you know, just talking. 
uh uh Karen and then they asked about uh Michael because you know Ashley had said you know his ass went to go get snipped or whatever had his little procedure and now all of a sudden when Karen was like so how you feel about that she was like I, I could give two fucks okay just don't be calling me from the emergency room when your shit broke I said oh excuse me now see last week when you said some shit about him getting a vasectomy you was up in that goddamn confessional feeling some type of way that he went on ahead and got it now you don't feel two type of shits okay okay hmm which one is it ashley all right um but anyway you know wendy shows up and you know wendy's talking about how you know she's getting her pool fixed and done or whatever and her little daughter has some little asthma okay that she just found out she has and you know all of that situation okay ashley feels some type of way about the fact that somebody leaked the information to the blog um <coughs> <Ooh>. <coughs> Excuse me. but uh my whole thing is who the fuck be in y'all circles that be leaking this shit okay i just really want to know and that be making me um trying to think like is it really y'all that's leaking it and y'all faking like y'all don't know who leaked it? Because I feel like it's somebody that know Ashley and who knows Michael who leaked the shit. Or one of them motherfuckers that's up in the goddamn group who leaked it. Or they did it themselves. That's what I feel like, okay? Um, But anyway, you know, she just felt some type of way about that. But moving on from that, um, you know, Karen and them, they was just pissed off about the whole situation that happened with the kids at, uh, you know what's her name robin's little get together and all that and wendy's whole thing is i understand that you know we ain't on the same page but you got to meet me halfway and robin is not trying to meet her halfway giselle probably ain't trying to meet her halfway either and at the end of the day do i feel like in this moment that robin is doing too much robin is doing too much um because if you look back at it She's just in her feelings because Wendy called her out, you know, and Wendy spoke about her relationship. Mind you, Wendy ain't the first person to speak about Juan and her relationship. Karen spent the whole fucking season talking about that bitch relationship. Karen spent the whole reunion talking about that lady's relationship with Juan. And they're okay. They're okay. And she never really tried to ice Karen out the way that she's trying to ice Wendy out and the way that people are going and I have to bring it up because I've seen it in the comments and it was a touchy subject last season and sometimes you just can't deny it um you know some people are chalking it up to colorism you know what I'm saying because you feel like the two dark girls are getting iced out or you know getting shit pummeled upon them for whatever reason and that could be the case I'm not gonna sit here and say that it ain't but all I'm gonna say for sure for sure Robin doing too fucking much when it comes to this Wendy situation this ain't the first time somebody that said some shit about your relationship or called you out on something and you weren't able to get over it like you're doing too goddamn much I feel you know to the point where it's coming down to the kids like that's fucked up and then Wendy talking about something you know maybe i want to get everybody together and we have a little burn session and um we get all the people out there put our grievances out there on the table i said no wendy girl you know shit like this um reasonably shady happened already and you see how that shit didn't go well okay so you know um she was like no girl i still want to do this i said okay she said listen i'm gonna put it in a group text and um ashley and them was like or mainly Ashley was like, maybe you should just give um Giselle and Robin put it in a separate text because you know Wendy was like, no, I'm putting it in a group text so that everybody can know that everybody's getting the same message and it's nothing behind it. And Ashley whole thing is, well, you had a different issue with Robin and Giselle, so maybe you need to do a little. I said, bitch, fuck all that. I was with Wendy. Okay, one thing about it is we can try to make up, but I'm not going to try to kiss your ass and make you want to talk to me, okay? If you don't want to fuck with me, you don't want to fuck with me. And that's just it. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to butter it up nicely so that you can get the message. Fuck that. If you don't want to come, you don't want to come. You ain't got to come, okay? But don't say that I didn't invite you, all right? And don't try to say that I gave you a different type of message. No, everybody got the same one, all right? I said, I got scared of fucking Gisela Barber. What the hell? You got to talk to her a different girl. Fuck out of here. Who are they? Who are they? Divorce and divorcee. That's what they are. I'm sorry. 
So, um, Candace and Chris, they, they oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Let me get that together. Candace and Chris, they at their house, okay? And, um, you know, they was talking about massages and stuff. And I wanted you to massage my back, but you wound up giving me a coochie massage. He was like, I mean, that's how it always end up anyway. So, I don't know what you asking for like that. Bitch, I said, mm. you know what? A part of me would like to see it, but I'm going to let that go. Meanwhile, you know, her sister comes over um, and, you know, they get to talking and everything. And uh, she's talking about her music. Um, she's releasing a deluxe version of the Deep Space album. She has some new songs on there. The first single that she's releasing is going to be called Insecure. And Mama was so goddamn happy to let us know that, you know, she got Trina to be on the track, too. And she gonna be up in the video. Bitch, do you know her sister, Crystal, who was probably younger than her? Girl, I don't give a damn. Everybody, bitch, uh, Crystal, you don't look at Love and Hip Hop Miami? Crystal, you mean to tell me you ain't never heard on the baddest bitch? Uh, who's bad? Who, who's bad? You mean to tell me you ain't never heard you know me? Uh-uh. You ain't never heard none of that. You ain't never heard pull over that ass too fat. Be, be, pull over that ass too fat. You ain't never heard none of that. You ain't never heard none of that. Baby, when she said, who's that? I said, oh my God. Who what? Who what? I said, now shit, bitch. Come on. Let's, what, what's going on? Okay. Is it a generational gap or whatever? I, I really feel like you should know who the fuck Trina is. You know? Even if you just know one song, you should know who Trina is. But... You know, um, she's happy for her about that. Then we get this whole situation with the... Uh, Wendy sends that text message out. Girl, she said this is a burn session. And she put the fire emoji. She said this is just a safe space for us to all to get our issues out with each other. Um, and let nobody talk over each other and anything. And, you know, say what we need to say. And try to do it with love and all that stuff. Candace said, girl, I don't know. This ain't going to happen or whatever. You know, um, she talked about the whole situation with uh, Ashley coming over there to the house. And, you know, she said she wants Ashley to just go out there and be a hoe or whatever. You know, do what you got to do. Like, go have fun. You've been locked up with this man. Go have fun. That's what she wants. Okay. But uh, we get to the next day, I guess, when it's time for this little thing to happen. And I'm just sitting here like, mm. Mm. We see her, King, what's her name? What is her name? Wendy. I was about to call her Kenya. Wendy, you know, she's in the car with Ashley and she's talking about how, you know, she was passing a goddamn kidney stone. That is what that girl, I done had gallbladder issues and thank the Lord, I ain't never had to uh, have, I had gallstones, but I ain't never passed one. And you know the pain of what happens with a gallstone. The pain from a fucking gallstone is when it gets trapped up in the gallbladder or the thing that the shit supposed to, the, the, the bowel and shit come out of or whatever the fuck. It gets trapped up in that bitch. That's where the fucking pain comes from. So when I had my gallbladder, I was so glad that I got that shit taken out just the time that I got taken out because my shit was trash. It was headed to that area, to that situation where they would have had to immediately take it out doing emergency surgery. But um, that is something I don't want to deal with. I've seen somebody try to pass a kidney stone, bitch. And when I realized what that been about having to pass the kidney stone, like, baby, it wasn't no cut you open and take that bitch out. It was, bitch, you're going to have to either piss that shit out or something like that. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> I said, piss it out or shit it out. Whichever one, baby, it's going to have to come out your body down below. I said, oh, my God, I just don't want to feel that shit. And she said, baby, this is what I deal with. I said, girl, what? She said, it's up there with the pain of giving birth. I said, oh, my God. And then, you know, um, she had told Candace. And Candace said, yeah, I had one. And, you know, uh, uh, Chris, he had passed one that was just as big. And I said, God damn. You know, she said, maybe it's from lack of water or whatever because she be ripping and running so goddamn much. She ain't got time to drink and she don't got, she don't got time. She don't want to drink too much because she ain't got time to go to the washroom. 
And I'm sitting here like, girl, you got to take care of yourself. You got kids, okay? You got a family. You know what I'm saying? You can't be out here doing all this shit. You stressing yourself out too much and you know what your issues is, but you not trying to do nothing about it. Then you talking about your mama had to go to the hospital because she had some elevated levels. And you don't want to be like her in 30 years. I said, then calm the fuck down, Wendy. Bitch, Wendy better than me, okay? Wendy is trying to show good faith that she mean that she want everybody to come together and everybody to be on one accord. Girl, she didn't got a sprinter band for the everybody else. I said, mm-mm. <laughs> it ain't going to come out of my pocket. It's going to have to come out of production pocket because, baby, I ain't doing all this for y'all asses, okay? For you to cuss me out when we get here. Hell no. Nah. Give me my rad back, okay? Fuck all of that. But, um, of course, Robin... Robin, her ass on there, Giselle on there. You know, Robin said, I'm just here to be nosy. And I was like, I was surprised that she showed up because I thought she wasn't coming because ain't nobody respond to the text message. He go, Robin. That shit was so insincere, so fake. I said, bitch, that's because you feel like you feel like everybody fake because your ass fake. That's just what it is, okay? Like, damn, bitch, can we just give shit a benefit of the doubt? Like, I get y'all have y'all issues, but you already coming in with negativity, like... Damn, Kid, uh, 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 Wendy said, listen, I decided to get him a separate goddamn core because I don't see the point of us coming in together and we doing, d dishing it out up in the car together. Hell no, let's just wait till we get to what we get to. I said, you know what, better you than me, uh, Wendy, because I would have said, fuck y'all. <laughs> Girl, they get up into this damn thing, um, you know, and we already knew that it was going to be some negativity from at least two people, Robin and Giselle, okay? I get it. I get it. But at the same time, if you had no no, no reason or you feel like you was not going to get anywhere with this person or whatever, you should have stayed home. You should have told production, bitch, pistol me off the fucking schedule, okay? If I don't get paid, I don't fucking get paid. Just, just let that be because I real life don't like this bitch, okay? That's just what it is and ain't nothing she can say go make me um want to be cool with her or whatever. That's what y'all dumb asses should have did because y'all really came in negative as fuck, all right? And I get it at the same time, but you, they were not receptive to anything at this point because, listen, you know, um... Wendy was told about herself, you know, saying that she was being condescending. She realized that, okay, you know, she 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 can't come off condescending. Cool. When them girls got there, baby, Giselle was the first one that got up in there. And Ashley and Wendy was already there. Wendy was like, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Baby, Giselle walked right past her, gave Ashley a hug, didn't say nothing to Wendy. Robin went on and sat her ass down, too. I said, you know what? I'm not even mad at that because if we ain't on the same page, I don't give a fuck about saying hi to you or giving you a hug or whatever. I don't have to talk to you, okay? But at the same time, I'm not going to come there and be so fucking negative, you know? But I get it that emotions are high, feelings are hurt, and at the same time, I want Giselle and Robin to understand that Wendy played a part in this, and Wendy was not doing this by herself. You guys played a part in this too, because the way that they sitting there acting like they were attacked by Wendy, and and, and, and Wendy was just pissed off at them for no re reason, and was doing the things that she was doing last season for no reason. No, boo-boo. That lady did not come out of her bag and wake up one day and be like, oh, let me go after Robin and Giselle. No. You guys started the shit, okay? And she just continued it. And played a, a better game at it than you did. And you got your little fucking feelings hurt because you 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 you, you couldn't get away from it. Because everybody in their mama was talking about your ass. That's just basically what it was, okay? You know, and Wendy girl, you fuck all this, write the shit down on the paper and burn it if it's negative and we are talking all this shit. Let's just say this. This is what you should have did. Let's go around the room or whatever and uh, everybody say whatever they have to say about this person. And if it's um, a person that's being talked, nobody else can speak but the person that's speaking, okay? That's it. That's it. Girl, we ain't have to write no shit down because I was with Giselle, bitch. Ain't nobody got time to write no goddamn soliloquy down about how we <laughs> But did y'all hear that shit where um um Candy said, Now girl, why would you bring um you back to a winery when we know some shit happened? What did she say? Like some bulls or some shit like that? And then they it was it was it was negative and it was kind of fucked up, but you know, that's her experience, and then they gonna flash back to her incident with Monique. I said, Oh, okay, we still living back there. Baby, we just ain't gonna never get up off of that. And I'm talking about everybody. 
Um, because even when we try, sometimes it just keeps popping up. But you know, Candace was um Ashley told her some things about herself, you know, she's hard to get to know or some shit like that or whatever. She's opening up. And I hope you stay on this path that you're doing. And, you know, all this stuff gave her a little bit of affirmation. Candace, you know, she was like, I'm your real friend. So I ain't got to write shit down. She spoke from her heart, you know, saying how good of a person she was. She was the only one that gave real, real positive shit about her for that moment. Um, Monique, mm, see, wrong bitch. Mia, she basically said, you know, it's like you try, it, you want to get to know you or whatever, because I'm going to be a burn. It's going to be a burn. You know, you, you kind of get hard to like or whatever and all this other shit or whatever. She said, okay, fine. I, I really don't remember what she said, but Mia was saying in the confessional, you know, she, she want to like her, <laughs> but it's just that she's hard to like. And it's understandable. I'm not even mad at her for saying that because when me, um, when Wendy first came on the show, she was kind of hard to get with. She really was, okay? And if you go back and look at my reviews from when she first came on, we all were saying the same thing. You know, I, I just felt like she was a bit much. Uh, she calmed down last season, and now she's in the hot seat this season. She's being iced out. That's literally what's happening. She's being iced out, and if you don't see it, you're intentionally not trying to see it. And this part literally showed us because, you know, um... When it came to Robin, Robin said, we're oil and water. We're just not going to get along. And that's just it. Okay, cool. And then Giselle said, that's all that I got to say too, you know. And Giselle want her to take accountability for the things that she's done. And I'm like, why don't you take accountability for the things that led her to do the things that she did to you? Talk about what you did to her, you know. And, you know, Robin gets up in her feelings about the whole situation of you, you, you not saying what um you, you did to me and all this stuff or whatever. And Giselle popping up too. And I'm just like, so both y'all finna gang up on this lady. Both y'all finna gang up on this lady and tell her what it is that she did to y'all. But y'all not gonna say what y'all did to her. You know what I'm saying? And this is a pattern of you guys. Okay. Y'all do that t tag team and shit. And Wendy, she sat there and she took it. Okay. She took it. She wasn't the one being aggressive. As we can see, it's not Wendy being aggressive. Robin was aggressive. And, and, and when I say aggressive, I mean loud. Okay. Doing the absolute most. Okay. You know, and, and Giselle a little bit too, you know, um, getting all up in your feelings. About stuff, and you ain't going to tell people that I tried to fight you and all this stuff and woo, woo, woo. And I said, when, 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 when she said somebody tried to fight her. Girl, she talking about when they was up at the um, TikTok thing or whatever, the little dance studio, and when Robin got her ass up, and she was getting up as if she was finna go over there to uh, Wendy. We not gonna say she was finna hit the bitch, but she was walking towards her. And, you know, um, she's one of those people that want to get approved. Let me get um, Sharice on the phone. Sharice lied her ass off for Robin to say that Ro she didn't have to hold Robin back. Okay, but when they played the tape back, not only did she put her arm right here to try to hold her back to pull her back a little bit, she even stepped in front of her and put her hands right here on her to hold her back. Like she wasn't, you know, just trying to get in her way to stop her from moving. Okay, it wasn't hard, but she was still trying to calm her the fuck down and sit her ass down. So Sharice got on that motherfucking phone and she lied. Okay. Maybe she didn't remember, but bitch, you lied. All right. The tapes told us the different thing. And I hope they bring that shit up in the fucking reunion. Um, not only that, but what really got me was the fact that um, you know, Robin kept on saying, You gonna talk, uh, you talking about something I'm trying to fight you or whatever, like I'm a thug. I ain't no thug, I ain't no thug, I ain't no thug. Okay, you did, you did, you did. I'm sitting here like, what? What? So because somebody tried to fight somebody, they're a thug now? So when your sister and your brothers get into it, they're thugs when they fight each other? When brothers and brothers get into it, when sisters and sisters get into it, when family get into it, they're thugs? You autom The fact that you automatically equate fighting amongst black people to being thugs, because that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about, Robin. We're talking about black people. And I don't, I don't care if somebody's going to say I'm reaching or whatever, but... That's what they give black people when they start fighting all the time. Thugs, thugs, thugs. And the fact that you automatically came up with that. And I'm just sitting here like, since when do we equate all the time, you know, certain people fighting as thugs? And then you only say it when we already know that they only uh, use thugs to talk about black people. Because they won't say that about white people. They really don't. You know, and I was just like, wow, Robin, that's what you think? 
Nobody called your ass a thug and nobody thought that you was being a thug. So ain't nothing about you that said thug, bitch. So why would you even use those words? I, I just didn't understand that. I did not understand that. And, you know, she just, I don't, I don't, I don't. I saw shit she was saying. I'm like, bitch, calm your ass down. See, people be fucking trying with your ass, Robin. This is why I just don't see it for you. This is why I just don't see it for you. You embarrassing. You really are. And if I was Wendy, I wouldn't talk to your ass no more. Fuck you. Bay B. Robin said, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck, bitch. She get the fuck up out of here. I see she comes from this some fake shit. Listen, Giselle, you can call it fake or whatever, but y'all was the only one that was showing y'all asses. And I'm so glad that Karen spoke up and said, this ain't how we supposed to do shit. Now, 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 listen, Wendy, you was talking about the therapy. Girl, if you wanted to do therapy, you should have got a therapist. Okay, y'all should have did a therapy type of session, but that's not it. But I get what you're trying to say. And again, Giselle and Robin, if y'all was not going to participate, you should have told them to write you off the schedule. Okay? Write you off the fucking schedule. That's what could have happened. But then, you know, we get from that shit because you, y'all tried to make Wendy look foolish. Y'all made yourselves look foolish. Okay? But we get off of that. To Ashley wanted to bring up something to Candace about the fact that um, one of her homegirls or whatever said that, you know, Chris was, uh, you know, flirting with her or whatever at the spring party and all that stuff. And I said, what? What? And you want to know what it is? We're not trying to sit here and say that Chris is an innocent person. And this moment... He could possibly have been. But it's just the way that these things are coming out and how all of a sudden everything want to come out at the same time. And so now it seems like either y'all working in conjunction with each other or just some shit just ain't right. And I would probably believe what Ashley said about the flirty thing or whatever. More so about Giselle shit. But that's just another difference because it's Giselle. Because, you know, people flirt. People probably say something in a little tone or whatever, whatever. Okay, fine. It's plausible. It's not, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not possible. I'm not going to sit here and say that it didn't happen because we did not see that. And we didn't hear it from old girl. So, we don't know. But at the same time, I am 100% on Candace's side. Because Candace said, why the fuck would you bring that shit up in front of all these bitches like this? Why would you wait till now to bring it up? When situation was going down with your husband, I gave you the respect by giving it to you in private. I told you in private. That's what was going on. You could have did that shit to me. Tell me, son, wouldn't you like it if I just told you face to face? Bitch, you could have called me and told me some shit like that. You could have came back over there to the house and told me some shit like that. Or you could have pulled me to the side and told me some shit like that. But you're going to do it in front of the group. And then, you know, she was like, since you were always talking about my husband and what he be doing, she was like, I mean, it's proven, right? No, it is not. It's not. Or whatever. And then going to say something now that you on the other fit. Now you know how I feel. And I was with Candace when she said, bitch, you was being vindictive. That's exactly why you did that shit. Okay? You can't be fucking trusted, girl. Here I am thinking that the friendship, well, the little situation ship in the beginning of the episode was cute and all that shit. And you did that shit on purpose. You, you can't tell me that you didn't do that shit on purpose because the way that you responded afterwards you made it seem like you did the shit on purpose okay because if you was truly there trying to tell her what was up and then you're gonna say something and i heard that he be sliding up in other people's dms and it was more than what he be saying in mass i said girl what and even if that's the case why you just sit down on it and you just not saying something now that's my thing. If I know my friend, husband, or girlfriend, or boyfriend out here doing some fucked up shit, I'm not going to have her going out here looking crazy. But see, y'all not friends, okay? But see, y'all getting to know each other. You getting to know each other again. And I still would have said some shit so that she can know that, baby, this, this, it ain't coming from a negative place. I'm just letting you know before it get out there or whatever. And I would have pulled the bitch to the side. I said, Ashley, you ain't shit. You really ain't shit for that. Okay, and if Candace would have whooped your ass, which I know she wouldn't because, you know, Candace is all mouth. I don't, I've yet to see if she can back that shit up. 
so far she can't but she's all mouth and this is the moment where i wish she had hands or whatever and she would have got her lick in but then that would be like bitch you get mad at monique for popping your ass and then you gonna pop somebody else's ass so no you you did the right thing candace you took that breath in because we don't need no more violence but i'm just saying in the more per woo, in the outside world in the outside world ash you better be glad that you were sitting next to somebody that ain't gonna fight your ass okay because she can't fight or she just don't want to fight on this show you know what i'm saying because bitch you would have got your mouth popped to say what you said so confidently girl hell no nah. y'all be playing with fire on these shows but anyway that was love real housewives of potomac and it was a to be continued y'all tell me how y'all feel about this and i'll see y'all later don't look for married to madison right away because you know um they put family karma on in this place and then Mary's Medicine Reunion come on right afterwards. But girl, y'all tell me how y'all feel. I'll see y'all later. Peace.